What is up YouTube? Today we are going to learn how to make a lamp out of this dirty NES Advantage and this broken zapper. All that and more next. So to begin this project you'll obviously need a zapper and an NES Advantage. Broken preferably. A light kit. A drill with various size bits. Two small screwdrivers. Some scissors and pliers various size screws, one being one and one fourth of an inch and the other being three fourths of an inch, some type of glue, a lampshade, and a light bulb. First you'll want to flip over your NES Advantage and remove the two visible screws. Next, take your screwdriver and remove the plastic pads that cover the four hidden screws. Next, take out the four hidden screws. I don't have a cup here, but I would suggest getting a cup to hold all your screws so that you don't lose them during the process. Finally, use your screwdriver to remove the bottom base of the NES Advantage. In the next step, you'll see that I try to use a set of pliers to remove the turbo button. I later discover that an adjustable wrench works much better. What you're seeing me do here is using a piece of foam tape to cover the turbo button so that I didn't make any indentions in it when I pulled it out. Although this didn't end up mattering because you do not keep that turbo button. Here's another failed attempt with pliers. And now I switch to my adjustable wrench, which takes it right off. The next thing you'll want to do is remove the screw and washer that is located down in the hole where the turbo button once covered. This proves to be a little more difficult than it looks. It took me a few minutes to get it off with these pliers and a little handy help from the screwdriver. See how stubborn it's being? A little more work and finally it came off. Next, turn your NES Advantage over and remove the capacitor located under the turbo button. Finally, take a pair of scissors and go ahead and cut the cord from the NES Advantage so it won't be in your way. This will now serve as the base to your lamp. Next up, preparation to the zapper. First up, locate the side of your zapper that has the screws and go ahead and remove all of the screws. I think there's five or six in total. Minus the two at the barrel. Go ahead and set aside your gray pieces and get ready for the next step. Now remove the two small screws at the base of the barrel. Take your zapper apart and get rid of any loose pieces. Next, unscrew the gray housing that covers the trigger. Oh, there's one last piece I forgot to remove. Finally, remove the gray housing and go ahead and pull the wire out that wraps around the exterior edge. Next, put back on the gray housing and proceed to screw in all the screws. Here you see me putting back together the zapper just so I can line it up to make sure the lamp is going to look the way I want it. Next, drill a small hole to the left of the larger hole inside where the turbo button once was. This proved to be a little more tricky than it looks like. 
I actually had to use two or three different drill bits before I actually got the size where it would fit the screw. The small hole will be for the screw and the large hole will be for the wire. Here I am lining up the gun trying to decide exactly how I want it to sit on the NES Advantage. That looks about right. Next, drill a small hole on the back right side of the zapper. This will be where the screw connects the zapper to the NES Advantage. You will later need to drill a larger hole on the left side, which is where the lamp wire will feed through. So make sure you give yourself enough room. Also, you'll eventually have to make these same holes in the gray portions of the zapper. So don't forget that. Here I am using the drill bit to bore out a little piece of this board so that the screw would fit better. Here I am opening the lamp kit. This is just so that I can make sure that the lamp wire will feed through the hole that I screwed in the back of the gun. Here I am boring out the hole a little bit larger so that the screw would actually fit into the hole. Getting the hole to be large enough was kind of a process, but I didn't want to do it too much at one time because I knew that I would need room on the other side of the zapper for the other hole. Now that I've gotten the screw to fit on the right side, it's time to drill the left hole, which is where you will feed the lamp cord through. This hole will have to be a little bit bigger than the hole on the right. Now I'm adding my gray piece so that I can also drill the hole through that. I think I eventually take that right side of the gun off so that I could see what I was doing as it was going through the orange piece. So now I'm actually screwing through the gray piece into the pre-existing hole that was on the orange portion of the zapper. I think I actually had to bore this out a little bit, but I think I end up showing that in the video. Here I go, just rinse and repeat with the right side of the gun. Now I'm screwing the screw up through the bottom of the NES Advantage so that way I can make sure that the zapper will fit onto the screw. This was very challenging trying to get the nut onto the screw. As you can see, I struggled a little bit and ended up using a screwdriver to twist it on there. I apologize if I ever take it out of frame, like right there. Sometimes when I was working, I had a hard time determining whether I was in frame or not. But hopefully you get the point. Now to finish tightening the screw, the best way to do it is to screw in the bottom portion. Once again, I'm out of frame, I apologize. Now you want to line up your drill and screw a hole through the front portion of the Advantage. This will hold the handle portion of the zapper firmly to the front of the Advantage. The best way to get this screw through the bottom of the zapper is to actually take your screwdriver and just screw it in. And then you can force it through that hole in the Advantage. It took me a minute to figure that out. I don't know why.
Next, flip it over and add the nut. I think I just hand tightened it. There you go. Here I am doing a little extra work on the left side of the zapper so that way that the cord could feed up through it. It must have not been bang up at this point. And a little more. You can see I'm actually boring it out some. And finally, I think the cord fits through the bottom piece of the zapper. There it goes. So basically what you want to do is feed this up and around those little circle pieces where the screw was. I don't know if I show that very well on here, but that's in essence what I did. The best way to tell if you fed the cord up through the zapper correctly, you should get a nice tight seal on the zapper when you try to close it back up. And I'm closing it and that looks pretty factory. So the next thing I can do is now screw in the screws back into the zapper to hold it together. Next, choose the middle size bottle adapter and thread the metal adapter through it until you can see one fourth an inch at the top. Make sure you do not take off the stopper. I actually did do this, that piece that I'm unscrewing right now, and it caused me a lot of headache later that I will not show you guys for the sake of time. Next, fit the adapter in the neck of the gun and feed the cord through it. And now you can take the two small screws and tighten them on each end of the barrel of the zapper around the adapter. Finally, put on the flat piece and then screw on the lamp adapter. Make sure you leave yourself enough room to wire the uh, lamp adapter. So here I am actually wiring up the lamp. Make sure that you read the directions because there is a difference in the two wires and if you reverse the polarity it probably won't work very well or could catch your house on fire. One of the cords, if I remember correctly, has an indicator by um, there are some grooves in, in the actual cord so that's how you will know which one goes where. It's explained pretty easily in the back of in the directions on the back of the box so it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. So if you notice how loose that is that is because I forgot to keep that one washer on the stopper that I'm holding in my hand and uh, when I put it back on it fixed that pretty easily. There you just see me pulling the cord at the bottom to tighten it up a little bit. Um, I think this was after I had uh, fixed the problem. So guys, after you wire your lamp, you basically take this portion with the switch and push it down in here and there's these little teeth that will connect right around this ridge. Once this is on, take your light bulb and screw it in and then Pop your lampshade on, and boom. NES Advantage, zapper light. The only thing next to do this bad boy is plug it in and see if she works. Oh, one final step that I forgot to put at the end of this. The very last thing you wanna do is put your six screws back in and take your glue and glue the four pads on. Now we can plug it in and see if it works. All right guys, so let's see if she works. There you go, NES Zapper Light. I hope this was an easy tutorial to follow. I'm sorry if some of the dialogue sounds very boring. When I went back and watched it and did the voiceover, I kind of just explained it as I watched it 
I could have maybe watched it and typed out a dialogue so I wouldn't stutter and mumble over my words, but I didn't do that. So sorry if I sound extremely robotic while that's going on. At least there's some Mario music in the background to make up for it. Um, I took this idea from Shantendo64. Um, he has a really good video that maybe the um, editing might be a bit better in some of the explanation, but what I found was that what I experienced through what Shantendo64 put on his video, there was a lot more trial and error that he uh, did not show, and for some reason I'm blue right now. So anyway guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, come back for more, and let me know if you decided to make an NES zap zapper lamp. Uh, take care, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.